up folks, I'm Arjun, and in my previous Levitron video, I had told you guys that I'd make another Levitron video, which is regarding how to make that levitating top and how to get it to levitate. So, without further ado, here's the video, and let's cut to the chase, how to make the top, and the primary materials. So, here are the primary materials slash magnets. This is one of the primary magnets. It is a neodymium ring magnet and it has an outer diameter of about 2 centimeters and an inner diameter of 0 0.5 centimeters. So that's this magnet and keep those parameters in mind. And then this is the second primary magnet, well primary magnets. So this is the big boy, the really large ceramic magnet. This magnet is made up of ceramic materials and that's why it's called ceramic magnet. So this magnet has an outer diameter of 4.5 inches and an inner diameter of 1.5 inches. And I recommend that your large base magnet shouldn't be smaller than this because it won't have enough power to get the top to levitate. And this actually doesn't have enough power to levitate it itself. And so that's why I added these magnets. These are four neodymium disc magnets. And they have a diameter of 25 millimeters. So I added these to strengthen the field and to get it to levitate. And yours can be bigger than this and that would be a bit of an advantage because you don't need these magnets strengthening the field. So if your magnet is bigger than this and has a lot of power to support weight, then that's fine. But here, my magnet doesn't have enough power to support the weight of the top, and so I had to add these magnets. So, now that we've got that out of the way, let's get into how to build the top. So to build the top, you're going to take your primary magnet, a really small pencil, and make sure that the pencil is sharpened. That's why I have the sharpener here. So, make sure that your pencil is sharpened. And you're also supposed to take this a, a washer, a random washer which you found. And you're supposed to stick them into each other. So first, stick this washer into the pencil. On that. And then next, stick your pencil and washer into the magnet. Like that. So the top should be looking something like this at this stage. And then, what you're supposed to do is, you're supposed to take a bead and stick it into the point. My bead is hollow, and that's why I'm able to stick it in. If your bead isn't hollow, then just attach this um, pencil separately into the magnet, and then make sure that it doesn't come out of the hole, if your bead is not hollow. And then stick your uh, unhollow bead into this hole. But my bead is hollow, and so I'm just going to stick it into this pencil point. And also make sure that your bead is smooth. Because, as I said in the previous video, this phenomena of spin-stabilized magnetic levitation is purely due to spinning of the top. And it wouldn't levitate if it weren't for that. So, if your pro top doesn't spin properly due to the um, roughness of this uh, bead here at the bottom, then you won't get it to levitate properly. So, make sure that your bead is smooth and it can make the top spin properly. So, now that I've got this here, I've assembled the top fully and it should be looking something like this and also one thing make sure that your um, washer which you're putting on the top isn't too heavy I personally recommend that you restrict your weight to about 0 0.2 grams and that would be the optimal weight for the washer and that would be the weight at which it, you would get to levitate so now you've got our top assembled. And for the purpose of this video, I'm actually going to use this top. And this top has the same things. It has a wooden stick. It has a wooden bead at the bottom. And it's I use the same assembly properties. And I also use the same magnet. So it's nothing different. And in, just in case you're suspecting that I might have something on this or some strings, I'll just... There's nothing here. There's nothing about this which is CGI. So, 
yeah, this top is ex exactly the same, except that it doesn't have the washer. So that doesn't make a big difference. So yeah, here is the top. So now that we've got the top assembled, let's get into the base. So over here, I have got a picture of the base configuration. Credit to my mom who drew it. So yes, this is the base. And uh, in the key over here, my mom's mentioned that the North Pole is labeled in red and the South Pole is labeled in blue. So keep that in mind. So according to that, this North Pole, I mean the top North Pole is facing down toward the base. And in the base, the side parts, the gray trunk over here, wait, you see the gray trunk? Yeah, the gray trunk has its North Pole facing up. And then the center, the center hole in the base magnet has its South Pole facing up. And you might be asking, buddy, you told us that this magnet, this base magnet is going to be repelling the spinning top. So if its South Pole is facing up, then how's it going to repel? Well, I've got an answer for that. So when you're spinning the top, you're going to be spinning it close to the base at first. So you're going to be spinning it in the hole. So the South Pole is going to be dominating. And think about it, if the North Pole were over here, then you wouldn't be able to get a good spin. And as I said before, this phenomenon of spin stabilized magnetic levitation is purely due to the spinning of the top. And if you can't even spin the top, then it won't work. So, yeah, the South Pole contributes to the part of letting the top to spin. But then, as you lift up, what's going to happen is these side poles are going to kick in. So, at first, this south pole over here is what this magnet recognizes. But as it goes up, these north poles on the side are going to kick in and eventually cancel out this field so that there will be a purely repulsive force, no attractive force from the center of the base. So, eventually it's going to be re purely repulsive and it's going to levitate. So, if you criticize me, think again. So, we got the base alignment down. So now we're going to do it in real life. We have to check the poles in which the magnets are. So what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take a random side of the magnet. Let's say I take this side over here. Let's we'll see what happens. So at the correct side, what's supposed to happen is the sides are supposed to repel and the center is supposed to attract. As I showed my diagram here, the nose pole at the top is going to be facing down. So the sides, the gray chunk, it's north, so they're going to repel, and the center is south, and it's going to attract. So, let's see if this side of my magnet is the correct pole. Centers, I mean, sides attract, and the center repels. So, no, it isn't the correct side. So, if that happens, then we're going to flip this over. And let's see if it has the correct side now. It should obviously have the correct side, because the opposite poles... But, just in case. So, here, the center attracts and the sides repel. So, we've got the correct side. So, the next step for me is to put my neodymium magnets on. And if you don't have a strong enough magnet also, then you can put your neodymium magnets on the side. And put them close to the center so that they can actually have some effect whatsoever. So, I'm putting them close to the center this. Make sure they're equally distant so that the field can be uniform and not messed up. So, uh, these magnets are hard to take apart. Now you've got the base lined. So, now I think I'll leave this video off with this. I'll be posting a next video right after this which will tell the other part of making this stop. So, thanks for watching. And stay tuned.